hi guys and welcome back to my channel so for today's video I'm going to be talking about how to be confident or just how to be more confident than you already are when most people talk about how to be more confident a lot of people just say like oh well stand up straight or do a power stance before walking in the room wear red lipstick speak in a deeper voice wear what makes you feel powerful do all these things and those things like do a little when it comes to giving you confidence but it mainly just kind of like facilitates manufactured confidence but not like an inward confidence that's unchanging and that's what I'm here to tell you guys how to get today so the world tells us that confidence is usually something that we have to like produce or manufacture ourselves like we have to just stand in a mirror and like repeat mantras over ourselves that eventually make us feel or believe the things that we say over ourselves and like Honestly, they don't work because people keep trying new things and that's how you know they don't work. But as a Christian, you have the power to have unchanging, unwavering, true, deep inner confidence that is not affected by manufactured things in this world. And not only is it not like manufactured by things of this world, but it's also not reliant on things of this world to keep up that level of confidence, which is something that I think is really important to address because most people think that you have to just keep searching and keep digging and keep striving really hard every single day to try and make yourself feel confident. And like some days you're gonna get tired, but you're just gonna have to pick yourself back up again. But I'm just gonna let you guys know right now, like that's tiring and that's wrong and it doesn't work. And the way that Jesus tells us to be confident is in a way that we don't have to strive every day to try and muster up our own physical strength to push through and make ourselves feel confident. It's something that he gives us as a gift. But the first foundational point in being more confident is knowing your worth, and specifically knowing your worth in Christ. And knowing your worth in Christ really is like the solid foundation that lets you build up all these other points that I'm going to give you on how to actually further that confidence and how to know and maintain that confidence but basically you have to know that your worth is not based on the opinions of others at all because if the opinions of others determined our worth then we'd all be a hot mess all we have to know is that we are worthy because he says we are worthy and we do not have to be reliant on human opinion which usually is fairly wavering and very fragile and honestly some people aren't always gonna see our worth and that is okay I love this one quote and I wrote it down right here but it says if someone can't see your worth it's not your job to explain it to them and it's true if you are, feel like you are tr constantly finding yourself trying to explain your worth and prove your worth to other people that is called codependency and it is not healthy and it's just people sucking life out of you and never giving anything in return and it is not something that you are called to live in because God has already called you worthy and as long as you can rest in that, you will never find yourself feeling the need to even prove your worth to other people. And when you know your worth, you also like hold yourself to a higher standard. You know that because you're worth more, you deserve more. There is a caveat to that, however. So knowing and maintaining and holding your worth to that higher standard is different than pride. Pride is not confidence. It's just pride, it's not nice, and it doesn't really get you anywhere. It just makes you feel like you're somewhere when in reality, you're probably lower than everyone else. You see, knowing and maintaining your worth is a humble action to choose to walk away from people or to stop putting so much energy into proving your worth. And that's because it's based in God-given meekness and not human manufactured strength. Another way to be more confident is to not live off of validation and compliments from others. Now, this doesn't mean don't take compliments from others, because honestly, it does take a lot of strength and maturity to do that. It just means don't fish for compliments to then make you feel more confident. Because when we fish for compliments, like when someone compliments us and we're like, oh, you don't mean that, or like, oh, no, you're so wrong, I actually feel this way. It's almost like saying like, please tell me more about why you think that because I can't even think of reasons or I just like hearing reasons as to why you think that. And it's really not cool. It doesn't leave you feeling fulfilled and it honestly drains the people that are continually giving you compliments. When someone just genuinely gives a compliment, it doesn't take that much strength. But when someone has to feel like they constantly are pouring into someone and validating as to why they feel that way and be like, I see this in you, why don't you? Let me explain this to you. That's really draining on a relationship and it's honestly not very healthy. Being able to do that leads me to my next point, which is know what you're good at and find contentment in your ability to do those things. God has given each of us unique talents and abilities, so they're there for us to find and recognize. And it's honestly kind of rude to God for us to negate those as not 
important enough to say that we are talented at certain things. Because we are. Because he made us. Because we're not just all incapable humans. He gave us all of different gifts and abilities to help further the kingdom of Christ. He's really nice like that. But once you know what you're good at, in order to then find contentment in your ability to do those things, you have to stop comparing your abilities to someone else's abilities. Literally everyone on Instagram says this, comparison is a thief of joy. Don't compare, blah, 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 blah. Comparing is bad. So I know you've heard it before, but it's really easy at times to still compare yourself to different things. But you just have to know that there are like invisible talents and abilities and there are more visible talents and abilities. So leadership is a more visible talent and ability. Um, any sort of like administration is a visible talent or ability. Public speaking is a visible talent or ability. Singing, dancing, any sort of like performing thing is a visible talent and ability. But there are lots of very invisible talents and abilities like kindness, self-awareness, others awareness, intentionality, thoughtfulness in general. There are so many different things where like people would die to be like, I wish I could just stop thinking about myself and be so busy in my little anxious thoughts that I could just step away for a bit and really slow down the moment and think, okay, what can I do to impact this person right now? What can I do to pay attention to this person right now? Or be more intentional and thoughtful of people like, oh, I remember that this person loves this. Let's do this for them instead. Not many people have that ability. That is a different capability that mainly is not possessed by people that have very visible talents. You see, we all got like this nice big mixture of partial invisible, partial visible talents, but some are a little bit differently proportioned where some have more invisible and some have more visible. But like, it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we all are talented. And my discontentment or contentment about my talents does not at all affect someone else and their talents. So it really only affects me and my ability to keep doing what I'm doing if I'm busy being discontent about my talents that God has given me while the other person who has no idea that we're feeling discontent about that because we're comparing ourselves to them is still living their life because they're not doing that. Like it's very one-sided and it only affects us and it affects us very negatively. Like there, no good outcome has ever come out of it. And if you're a fairly logical person, then that should just kind of put off a red flag showing you like, this isn't smart and we shouldn't do it. So let's stop together because I think we were called to live very intentional, content, and confident lives in Christ, especially Christians more than any other person because we are given the innate ability to be confident without ever having to do or strive for anything. Plus, confidence is attractive. Like the gospel and what Christ gives us is attractive. And so it's like, if we really start living out the life and the abilities that Jesus has called us to live and have, Miracles will be done in our society because people will spend less time being insecure and worrying about what they can and cannot do and spend more time helping others and furthering the kingdom of Christ. And honestly, I think that'll benefit everyone because in the end, we just have to know that we're all created equal. But you can walk around with the knowledge that you don't have to strive to be better than someone else if we're all created the same. You don't have to compete. Superiority and inferiority are a product of humanness and not of God. Meaning if we made it up and God did it, then we have no obligation to follow it. We are only obligated and called to follow what God has created and what God has set in motion and what God has set forth. And if that isn't that, then we don't have to like, you know, do any of that. So that's a pretty good way to like judge everything in this world is like, well, is that of God or not? No. Well, then do I have to really totally maybe do it? Will it really affect the kingdom of Christ negatively? And if the answer is no, then don't do it. You see, a lot of these points are based in knowing something because confidence is not a guessing game. You don't have to guess your worth. You don't have to guess that you need validation from people. You don't have to guess that you're good at something. You don't have to guess that you're content with your life. You don't have to guess that you maybe possibly have to compete or not. You're not really sure. No, you have to know your worth. You have to know what you're good at. You have to know who you are and whose you are. And you don't have to guess anymore on like whether or not you're worthy of something. God showed us that we were worthy of something and made us sure of it whenever he sent his son to die on the cross for us. Before we were even born, he gave us that kind of assurance. So if we find ourselves guessing certain things like, well, am I capable? Well, am I even good enough at literally anything? Well, do I have any talents whatsoever? Or did everyone else get blessed with talents but me? 
that is not of God and that is not something that you need to make a part of your daily thought life. We can walk in the insurance and also live with less anxiety knowing that we don't have to prove anything or strive for anything except for just run after Christ and know that he'll take care of the rest. And if that doesn't make you sleep better at night, then I don't know what will. And lastly guys, on a more practical note, you have to know that we as humans live with some form of insecurity in ourselves, all of us. Christian or not, we all have it. It's just a product of the fall of man and it will not go away till heaven come. But because of that, it's something that we can rest assured in in that because of our, those insecurities and those constant mental thoughts going through our heads, you have to remember that people are too busy worrying about themselves and what others are gonna notice and judge about themselves that we don't even notice and judge those about other people. For example, like whenever you have a stain on your shirt, pimple on your face, your voice cracked, something like awkward happens that makes you just think about it the rest of the day. Like, think of just how many times you've actually noticed a stain on someone else's shirt. And most of the time when you did it was after they pointed it out to you or because you watched it happen. Like we are all so busy worrying about the possible stains are on our shirt or the pimples on our face or the random things like that that we don't actually stop and look at that for other people. Like we aren't as judgmental when it comes to those superficial things on other people as we are on ourselves. Meaning we can rest assured knowing no one really even cares about that. So those little things that make us anxious or keep us up at night are not something that should make us feel less confident because at the end of the day, no one's gonna wake up remembering the random stain they saw on that one guy's shirt walking down like the aisle five of the Publix near them. Because when you wake up, your brain isn't gonna register it as some sort of memory that deserves to be stored in long-term memory. So it's just kinda gonna like pass away and you will not have the ability to recall it ever again. Meaning that other people's brains will do the same thing for you about your little problems or mess ups that you have. So once you learn and know your worth in Christ, know your talents and abilities and quit comparing yourself to others, you really can then have full pleasure wearing red lipstick, wearing clothes that make you feel confident, or doing some sort of power stance before walking in and giving a speech. Because all those things do work, but only for a short period of time. They don't actually fix the deeper set heart problem, self-worth problem that is right there that is the root of those feelings that constantly come out. If you find yourself constantly running towards wearing certain clothes that make you feel better or repeating mantras to yourself in the mirror or something like that and you keep running back to them because you have to keep doing them because it didn't work the first time, that just means that you have a different and deeper heart issue to address first before those things will have any sort of effect on you. And honestly, once you do start to know your worth in Christ, those things don't even become as important. Like. If you really want to like look good for an interview or for a speech, there's nothing wrong with that. But if your only motivation behind doing that is to try and manufacture this form of confidence in that what your value and what you have to present is gonna be seen as good enough, then that is not something or a reason that you need to be doing that for. You are already worth enough and everything that you will ever have to present will always be seen as enough in the eyes of Christ. You do not have to explain your worth to other people that don't see it. The people that see it will know and they will cherish you and they will treat you as such. And if they don't treat you as such, that means they don't know and you can walk away from them immediately because they will do you no good in life whenever it comes to some sort of close friendships. But guys, that is all for my video today. I really hoped you guys liked it. If you did like it, please don't forget to like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to share this video with those who need to learn and know their worth in Christ and learn how to be more confident. These lessons have helped me tremendously. There's something that God has just revealed to me over the years of my 20 years of life or so, but they have had a significant impact on how I view my life, view my world, and view my relationships, and view myself. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week for my next video.